weekend, Inside Out 2 absolutely crushed it at the box office. It made $155 million just in the United States, $295 million globally. That makes it, just here in the US, the second largest animated opening ever for a movie behind Incredibles 2. It's the largest opening since Barbie last July. And so the question comes to mind, why? Why did Inside Out 2 absolutely crush it at the box office? I've got eight reasons why, so let's talk about it. Hey, if you like this type of content, this clip is actually pulled from my weekly box office show that I do on Patreon, where I talk about the ins and outs of what's working, why it's working, all of that fun stuff. So if you like this type of content, consider joining over on Patreon for as little as $2 per month, $21 per year. Also, I do a lot, of, I clip out segments from my Patreon live stream, put them on my second channel, Sean Chandler Plus. So if you like this kind of editorial content, consider joining over there and join me down below in the comment section. Why do you think that Inside Out 2 absolutely crushed it at the box office this weekend. Why, in a year where so many movies have underperformed, where Pixar has not had a great run, where Disney has not had a great run the last five years, did this one finally have a massive comeback at the box office? Here's my eight reasons. Reason number one, it's good. <laughs> as simple as that. It's a good movie, or I'd say it's a great movie, that critics gave it over 90%, and then on Cinema Score, that is a polling of opening night audiences coming out of the theater, they gave it an A. So both critics and audiences thought this was a great film. And so there's just that buzz, that word of mouth, that this is a movie worth seeing. And when you have that point of reference of the previous film that a lot of people adore, a lot of people grew up with, we'll talk about that later on in this video, you end up with something where that word of mouth is very strong. Reason number two, it felt like a return to the Pixar magic. The first Inside Out is a movie that a lot of people had a very emotional reaction to for the obvious reason that it's about emotions, it's about childhood, and a lot of people felt like it helped them understand themselves better or their children better. And so it wasn't just entertaining, it was useful and it was highly relatable. And that's so often when people think about that Pixar magic, it's a movie that's not just entertaining, but there's something special about it that you connect with, that it's meaningful to you. That's what the first film was for a lot of people. And the sequel felt like it could capture that again that we're getting back to what we love about Pixar and what makes Pixar not just a good studio with movies that you enjoy, but a studio that a lot of people kind of put on a pedestal as this premium studio that puts out family entertainment. And this movie felt like it was going to capture that once again. Reason number three, there was no controversy surrounding this film where so many Disney Pixar films or just movies in general over the last several years have had some sort of controversy, scandal, whether contrived by the internet, people overreacting, whatever the reason, warranted, unwarranted, so many movies have something that creates division, something that puts people into two sides, gets you involved in these culture wars, whether it should or it shouldn't, that's a thing that has happened. And there was just none of that with Inside Out 2. There was some rumors, speculation, people tried to invent it based off past experiences, concerns about Disney, but none of it was actually true with the film. You just had a movie that was the sequel to something that a lot of people loved, that seemed like it might have the Pixar magic, and there was, didn't seem like a reason to be concerned or worried or the conversation didn't feel toxic or polarized, divided. Any of those things that have been so, so common in with recent blockbusters, recent Disney Pixar films, Star Wars, all of these things, there's none of that. None of the politics, none of the angry fandoms, any of that. It just seemed like family entertainment, which is what so many like especially parents, we just want to get back to that. We don't have to want to worry about things. We don't want to feel like we're getting involved in 
a, a debate on the internet by watching a movie, whether you like it or you don't like it. it you just don't want any of that. Um, it just felt like a movie that you could go see. And even like something like, um, like Turning Red, I wasn't a big fan of it. But the conversation surrounding it made it incredibly off-putting to me because like, I watched the movie, I was like, okay, I didn't like it, here's why. And people like pounced on me and were like accusing me of misogyny and being a sexist and a racist. I'm like, I just didn't like a movie because of the way that it presented parents. And anytime a movie has that surrounding it, it doesn't make a bunch of people want to flock out to go see it and being a part of whatever that is. And so... This movie just had none of that. Reason number four, the Disney Plus release mess is a thing of the past. So because of COVID, Disney kind of decided for Pixar that three different Pixar films in a row were going to release straight to Disney Plus. With Soul, I think it was they kind of had to, where... It was a weird time in history. Theaters are shut down. And so then they, they had an asset. They leveraged it to try and boost their streaming service. I get it. But you started getting into 2021 and they did the same thing with Luca. And you went, okay, I think you probably could have put that in the theaters. Because this feels like, I don't understand what you're doing right now. And then they did it again with Turning Red. And so they had three movies in a row that went to Disney Plus. And so you stopped Pixar from being a premium theatrical event and you made it something you just kind of watch casually on Disney Plus. And so all of a sudden, their next two movies after that open horribly. One of them just did horrible, period, and lost a ton of money. The other opened catastrophically, but then ended up having great legs. Elemental had great legs. So it moved into a kind of the gray zone, maybe was a little bit profitable because the legs were so good. And that movie probably took one of the biggest hits from the Disney Plus fiasco. And then, um, but it legged out to kind of earn back some trust at the same time that people that saw it, they went, okay, that's good. Reason number five, this is somewhat related to the last one, but before the movie came out, Disney announced it would have a 100-day theatrical window. And this is huge in the modern era where Warner Brothers did day and date release for HBO Max movies for an entire year. Disney released three Pixar films straight to Disney Plus. And Universal still does some day and date release with, like with Five Nights at Freddy's. You train audiences that movies are gonna drop on streaming in two weeks. So am I gonna pay $100 to take my whole family to the theater or do I just wait two weeks and watch it at home? You train audiences to stop going to the theater and of course that's gonna cut back grosses. And you're dramatically, to, like <laughs> if, if you can watch the movie for $15 per month as just part of a streaming service for your whole family versus $100 or $50 in tickets or whatever for the whole family, one of these is obviously a lot more money directly to the studio as opposed to through a streaming service. So Disney, both putting their movies back in theaters, Pixar movies back in theaters and announcing 100-day theatrical window. It will be over three months before this is anywhere else. If you want to be a part of that conversation, if you want to, the, as this movie's coming out, part of the excitement, you can't wait two weeks. You have to go to the theater to go see it, and you might as well go opening weekend and be a part of that big, gigantic burst. I think that's a gigantic part of it. Reason number six, it's a sequel, and sequels are safe bets. Now, I put out a, a video, a couple of different videos over the last few weeks where Pixar's made some announcements about how they evaluated the success of Turning Red and Soul and Luca and how they didn't do very well. And therefore, they're shifting their focus to more broad appeal films and maybe more sequels that are proven commodities. And I immediately hear that and you immediately go like, what? Those movies didn't release in theaters. What? What are you basing that off of like what's your metric for success for a movie that released straight to streaming during covid what are you talking about but they said they're they're focusing in on safer bets that are proven commodities that we know have broad appeal already based off their past performance and right after they say that 
They put out Inside Out 2, and it, it proves that that's a strategy that works. Now, don't do something weird that's a little bit too clever, clever in quotes, like Lightyear, but if you look at the track record of their sequels outside of Lightyear, they work. And this one makes that point. And I think right now, people trust the franchise more than the studio. So Inside Out 2, well, I'm excited about that because I, I trusted Inside Out. But that just general sense of trusting the brand that Pixar used to have and Disney used to have, I think that's kind of gone. Through some lackluster films, through some odd choices, through the internet being crazy, through them making choices that made the internet crazy, however you want to phrase it, that trust in the brands has diminished. Back 15 years ago, Pixar was a brand you just knew. If you go see a Pixar movie, you're going to see something special. The worst you might get is cars. <laughs> or you might get something that's not for you, but it's really interesting. Like, I get it if you don't like Wally, -E, but it's an interesting film nonetheless. I would say it's also a great film, but I could get why it might not be for everyone. And that's not true anymore. It's not true the same way. So I think some of it is that trust in franchises more than brands. And hopefully Pixar doesn't learn the wrong lesson from that and just triple and double, triple down on that whole we're going to do sequels thing. Reason number seven, I think this is an interesting one. I saw a tweet that said this, but essentially this is a Gen Z franchise and Gen Z is very excited to have their own franchise. If you look at so many of the big franchises that we've gotten over the last several years, they're millennial franchises or older Gen X franchises or maybe even old, like more than that. But you know, you think about Indiana Jones, Star Wars. These are from the 80s. Even Top Gun. You think about the Disney Renaissance. That's my childhood as end of Gen X, beginning of millennials. That's my, my stuff. And we've had so many sequels and live action remakes that are for my generation. And Inside Out is a Gen Z film. That was a formative film for them when they were a child, when they were an early teenager. And it meant something for them. And they're getting a sequel to it. And I think this is the evidence of the power of, okay, don't just make it for these very cross-generational ones that go back to the 80s, but also something like Inside Out connected enormously with the generation that's 20 years younger than me. This past week, I was uh, driving for a church event um, and I, I missed one day because I went to go see Inside Out 2. And so I'm, I'm just there with a bunch of people that are 12 to 25 years old with some of the interns and things like that. Everyone was asking about the movie and they went, I can't wait to see it. I have tickets to see it Saturday. I have tickets to see it Sunday. And that's when I knew, oh, this, this movie is something different because they don't normally, they're not normally excited about a movie like they are about this film. And it's all people that are Gen Z or very older millennials were so excited to check out this film. They want to go as a whole family. And that re leads to reason number eight. It is an event for families. People don't go to the movies as often, but they go when it, they feel like it's an event. And so last year, you had Oppenheimer, you had Barbie, Spider-Man, No Way Home, Top Gun Maverick. You have a handful of these films that just feel like events that everyone wants to be a part of. And this one is that for families. Like I have three kids, 12 to five years old, and all of them had an inside out face. There's stories with every single one of them of when we watched Inside Out for like three months straight. And now the two older ones are old enough that like, it's a movie that's reminiscent of their childhood, like the, or young childhood and like formative for them in an interesting way. And now there's a new one. It's a franchise for them, not dad's franchise. Not that movie that I showed them. Oh, I grew up watching this one. Now they're remaking it. Oh, they're doing a sequel to this thing I grew up with. No, 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 no. It's theirs. But I was there when they saw it the first time. So it's this whole family event that's not about me in my childhood, it's about their childhood. And this is the event film that, that's that.
I guess the other thing, I talked to a lot of parents this last week and they're talking about going over the weekend, taking the whole family to see Inside and they wanted to know, they were so excited, like just they loved the first one, fond, nostalgic memories for it and they want to recapture that. And they said they were going with friends, they were going with their whole family and so this feels like the family event that is that Gen Z franchise. So those are my theories as to why this movie just did so well at the box office, way overperformed expectations, all that fun stuff. Let me know your thoughts down below. Come back tomorrow. I will have my Pixar ranking. Remember, if you like this type of content, consider joining over on my Patreon page where I do a box office roundup almost every single week or subscribing over on Sean Chandler Plus where I do a lot of these editorial type videos. Thank you so much for watching and keep talking movies and TV too much. Bye-bye.